Hey, BioWites. Welcome to the podcast on, on taxonomy and phylogeny. Those are two pretty big words, but all they're simply saying is a way to organize and classify living things in such a way that we can gain information about all living things. Because if you think about it, if we would actually sit here and take this filing cabinet and file all the information on living things alphabetically, that really wouldn't help us. It doesn't really tell us much about an aardvark except that it begins with two A's in a row. So let's take a closer look now specifically at two different ways that we can organize living things that actually show meaning about those living things. So let me tell you what that means. That means that we're going to take a look at this first strategy, how to create phylogenetic trees, and the second strategy, a little bit different way to classify living things, um, how to organize them based on their taxonomy or their taxonomic groups. So at this point, you know the drill. Push pause and write down the LTs. And welcome back. So we're going to begin today by looking at a phylogenetic tree. Okay, and so what I have here on the left, we have a badger, a lizard, a goldfish and a frog, or in other words, a mammal, a reptile, a fish, and an amphibian. And what we're going to do is play a little game from Sesame Street called Which One Does Not Look Like the Others? So if we play that game, uh, you can see easily that the goldfish doesn't look like the others. It has no legs. So we're going to make a horizontal line up here. Then, if we take a closer look, the next one up is amphibians. and The frog does have legs, but what makes it a little bit different from the others is that um, it can't live out of water for too long. That skin's going to dry out. So we're going to put that one next in the line. Now, of the two, which one doesn't look like the others? Well, the lizard doesn't. The lizard doesn't have fur, and it's not warm-blooded. So we're going to put it next in line. And so that finally leaves then the badger or the mammal to um, finish up our line. So what we just did is we created a phylogenetic tree. It's going to help us show some evolutionary relationships such as this. So if we go down here, somewhere way down here, we don't know what it is, but there is some organism that first had a backbone. We're going to call that um, vertebral column. That means everything else on this list, starting with the fish and going all the way up through the badger, have a backbone. And so they all share a common ancestor right here that has that trait. But if we keep going, you can imagine there's another trait here, such as legs. That everything above that, such as the frog, all the way through the mammal, have legs. But the fish does not. So the fish kind of went off into its own group, its own outgroup. And you could do that. Um, we could go up higher, and we could go up higher yet. Now, another question you might have with the phylogenetic tree is to try and figure out, well, is the lizard more closely related to the badger, or is it more closely related to the frog? So here's how you do that. So over here, as we go higher and higher up, we have time. So what we need to look at is when did the lizard last share a common ancestor with both the badger and the frog? So if we look, let's see, I want to change colors for this one. We'll make it orange. So the lizard shared a common ancestor with the badger here at this point in time. If we go down farther, the lizard also shared a common ancestor with the frog here. So that can show us that in fact the lizard may be closely more related to the mammal. So that's how you can get a lot of information from a simple phylogenetic tree. Now how do we actually create these? Well, first step is this. You're going to compare and contrast features such as a backbone or legs, etc. So here's a chart where we have lots of different species on the left and lots of different traits. And you can see, um, let's see, 
the first trait of jaws the only thing that doesn't have jaws is the lamprey everything else has jaws and then we go down to lungs almost everything has lungs except a shark and a lamprey so let's use that information to help create this phylo phylogenetic tree so our second step is to place the organisms on a chart as such so we can see over here the lamprey is all by itself because this guy doesn't have jaws but everything else up here does until we get and we keep putting organisms on there until we get to the last one which is in this case in this example it's a human and it's the only thing that has the trait of bipedalism or the ability to walk on two legs now we're going to move on to a different way to organize living things and that's through um, organizing them based on their taxonomy now what is taxonomy you ask well here it is we have a guy not Darwin this time but a guy named Carl Linnaeus and he came up with a really great idea because quite frankly there's a lot of living things and depending on what country you lived in or what region of what country you may call this organism on the right a cougar or maybe a mountain lion so he decided to do this he decided to classify all living things by their names and that will help us to show evolutionary relationships as well so let me show you how this works all right all living things belong to the largest level of classification called the domain so we're going to do the analogy here of a russian nesting doll looks like this and inside those domains and by the way that if i can get this cursor here there are three domains for all living things within each domain we have several kingdoms and within each kingdom we have several phylums within every phylum there are several classes within every class there's an order and within every order there's lots of families and within every family there's lots of genuses and then if you just squint way over here if I can get it there's an even smaller one there it's perfect you get species and so a de mnemonic device to remember this is is such dumb King Philip came over from German soil so all living things have a specific classification based on that ordering let me actually show you an example of this so up here we have a picture of a cheetah and its classification so if we start up at the scientific name Panthera partis all living things have a specific scientific name so there's no confusion that that in fact Panthera partis is a cheetah and from there if we go let's start all the way down here you can see our acronym we have dumb King Philip came over from German soil so domains down here and the domain for the cheetah is eukarya you can see there's several different domains the cheetah is only in one of them and so we're gonna blow that one up and you can see there's several different kingdoms but the cheetah only belongs to the animalia kingdom and so on you can do that for phylum it belongs to the chordata phylum so it has a backbone then it belongs to mammalia it gives birth to living things or live birth and then the carnivora order there's lots of orders but there's only one that the cheetah belongs to the Felidae family panthera genus I have one more example for you and that is such here's an example and I put the mnemonic device dumb King Philip came over from German soil right in the middle now what I'd like you to do is I want you to take a minute here to compare and contrast the two columns alright times up so I hope that you noticed um, that they all share everything in common all the way through the family level that tells me right off the bat these two different organisms are very closely related the more levels they share in common the more closely related they are what I've also noticed and hopefully you did too is that the genus for every living thing is always going to be the first word of the species the same over here we have pan and then pan now the difference is pretty obviously they do have a different genus and a different species so what are these two organisms you might ask well 
The first one on the left, I hope you knew that was us, Homo sapiens. That's our scientific name. And the one on the right is our closest living relative, the chimpanzee. So that's a brief introduction to how we can classify living things. First, based on phylo phylogenetic trees, and the second, based on taxonomic levels. Thanks for listening.